So I hear you went to the opening. Yes, it was on the 4th of January, and it was unbelievable. The fireworks were fantastic. The pomp and circumstance was great. The crowds were terrific. They had thousands and thousands of people there, standing room only anywhere you go in the sidewalks in and around downtown Burj Dubai district. I don't know how they got all the fireworks on the building. The set designer for the building opening read the articles about my being inspired by a flower, and so he wanted to really turn the tower into a flower. That's why the fireworks are going off in all directions and all at once so that it sort of resembles a flower in bloom. Did the initial design come to you first, and then you thought, well, this feels flower-like, or were you actively going out to try and do something that mimicked nature? The initial design concept came to me first about how a building could feel anchored, but I really had a vision of the building going up and reaching its ultimate spire, you know, as a central point. Right. And then the flower idea sort of emerged later in terms of, well, what do we call this? You know, then I said, to me, how about the flower of Dubai? Were there any particular challenges during the design or during the construction that had to be overcome? Architecturally, I was looking for a complete statement. It would start at the base and then it would start stepping up and it would end in the spire. And the challenge was that as we started designing the building for real, some of the people at EMAR said they wanted to keep the tower to about 550 to 600 meters. I couldn't get the, the tower that I wanted into the form that I wanted. It was just too squat at 600 meters. So gotcha. it took me about a year and a half to finalize the design of the top of the building. I was constantly fighting the notion of, of economics and keeping the tower height lower. So that was the biggest challenge. And when I finally did the models that I wanted to do of the scheme that I thought was right, and I showed it to Mohammed Alabar, the chairman of EMAR, and Robert Fu, one of the directors there, they agreed that the 818 meters at that time should be the right way to go. We then modified the drawings and went through a couple more wind tunnel tests, verified that it would work structurally. So I knew all along it would anyway. But right, right. Outstanding. That one aspect of effectively changing the height yeah. during construction caused a lot of false news, I think. You know, programs started making reference to that, I think, on the Discovery Channel, how the contractors were building away, and here the architects changed the building halfway through. <laughs> right. That was never <laughs> your intention. It never changed any of their work, either. It was all <laughs> part of the same building. They hadn't even begun to reach the thinking of that aspect of it yet. Right. We've been hearing a lot on the radio lately about economic whatever, this, that, and the other in Dubai. Did you get any feel of that when you were there for the unveiling? Yes. Basically what happened is that they were so successful in selling the units at Burj Dubai. They were selling for $800 a square foot, and everything else was selling for $400 a square foot or less. Right. So it established a new benchmark in Dubai for what people perceived was value in a building. Right. And so all of the developers in Dubai started to get plots and build buildings all at once from 2005 to 2008. And what happened is that that caused a lot of inflation in terms of material costs. You couldn't even find a contractor to build your building. So, you know, it's a huge shortage of contractors and architects and engineers, and the prices just skyrocketed in the last year. 2008, before the crash, inflation was 25% a year Whoa. in construction. But the prices that people were buying units at on a speculative basis were also astronomical. They were up in the $1,500 a square foot range and $200 a square foot per year rent for office space. So it was a frenzy. And then in October, late October, I remember the date, the 23rd, the banks just stopped lending, and the bottom fell off. You know, you could just see everything stopping all at once. Yeah. You know, I've read a lot of criticism about doing a building like this in this time of recession. It's just nothing more than chest beating. But, you know, when you're in Dubai and you see the pride that the people have in this building and the sense of inspiration that they get by being associated with this, it brings to that culture a strong sense of hope and enjoyment and pride. And I think that's worth a lot.